Okay. Welcome to how to make Istio work with your app. And uh, the timing after the last talk is either really good or really problematic. I'm not sure which. Uh, my name is Karen Brunner. Um, I work at Stackrocks, which does Kubernetes native security. But this is not really about that. This is about Istio. So we'll be talking about a few things. I'm going to give, because this is, Istio is very complex. It's very hard to say anything about Istio in half an hour. So I'm going to talk quickly and kind of touch on things, but they're hopefully open to deeper dives if you need to go and dig for more information. So we'll just give a really quick intro. I know we had the last talk, but we have a quick intro. Uh, what, what to think about when you're deciding whether or not you want to adopt Istio, and then we'll talk about how to debug and troubleshoot within Istio. And, and then I'll give some examples of common problems that don't quite fit the ideal Istio application. And then ideas on how you can make Istio much less painful in the future, best practices, how, how to get teams to work together. So you know, service mesh, it's an infrastructure layer dedicated to managing service to service communication. Um, and it's, it's focuses, we'll pretend like the last talk didn't happen, but it focuses on either, on both controlling communications between services, uh, both routing and security, and also visibility. Visibility is, is a big one there. Um, Istio came out of, it's built based on Lyft's Envo Envoy proxy, and it's a joint pro project from Google, IBM, and Lyft. Uh, there, it has a huge number of features. Uh, around security, it, the, the most useful thing out of the box is mutual TLS encryption and authentication. It handles the certificates for you. Certificate rotation is not fun. That's a huge thing. Service routing, it's basically any magic HTTP routing that you could want for your application. Uh, I spent a long time in the past configuring HA proxy. It does all that and a lot more with a lot less configuration. It's very useful. Uh, visibility, um, this is since every you have a proxy Envoy proxy handling every connection. You know what these, where these connections are going, where they're coming from, and what they're doing. What protocols they're using, what requests, what paths, if they're HTTP based, what paths they're requesting. This is a lot of really useful information. And you can also configure it for request tracing through your applications. That does take, that does require modifying your application to pass the request headers through, but that, that tracing and the information is, is so useful when you start to have microservice scaling and performance issues. And this you also, also enables multi-cluster meshes. So you can have multiple Kubernetes meshes that are now one big virtual network. Istio's architecture, it has a dual plane architecture. And I did not make this image. <laughs> Stackrox's wonderful UX had made this image based on these chicken scratch diagrams that I gave him. So anyways, so <laughs> the, you have the control plane, which is, usually lives in the Istio system namespace. You have a mixer, which currently, this is changing a little, currently manages telemetry and some policy-based authorization. Pilot, which handles the actual route configuration and pushes that, pushes that out to the Envoy proxies. Citadel, which is your, your certificate management. Uh, and then these are the, the main three. And then you have the data plane, and the data plane is where your, your services live. Each of these pods will ideally have its own Istio proxy sidecar, which is Envoy proxy. And they are, that is where the actual, you know, your services, your service communication takes place. So data plane is configured by the control plane, but they have a pretty, pretty clear separation of duties. So an important question to ask before you go down this road is, do you need Istio? Um, Istio provides a lot of really powerful capabilities, but it is really complex, uh, especially for teams that are just getting familiar with Kubernetes and everything it can do and enable that Istio is, I feel like that it's that level of complexity times a lot. Um, very steep learning curve. It's, it's you're, you're still going to have to learn how to debug something new. Everything you learned about Kubernetes networking is not invalid, but it's, there's more to it, and it's going to get a lot more confusing. 
Um, so a good, a good middle ground is, you know, do we, if we may need Istio in the future, we think we're gonna need, you know, encryption over the wire, zero trust networking. We're gonna want to do the application performance tr you know, connection tracing, uh, but do we need it now? Can we wait? Because with every, every three months they're releasing and every, every release has a lot of improvements for manageability and performance. So can we wait, you know, three months, six months, make it easier to adopt or do we need it now? This is a good question to ask. Also, most of Istio's features, especially around security restrictions, are optional. So you can start with them turned off and then get some of the nice routing early or some of the visibility and then adopt some of the more stringent security protections later on. It's, uh, Istio debugging and troubleshooting is still sort of the wild, wild west. Uh, it's getting it, it's still a lot of very low level commands. Um, best place to start is, is if you're looking at connection logging, seeing if the connection happened in the first place. Check the Istio, Istio proxy sidecar con container logs for, for your target pods. You don't necessarily know which pod, if there are multiple ones in a deployment that this, this request went to, but you can usually narrow it down. Um, the the proxy, Envoy proxy log level can be set either globally for your entire deployment, or it can be set on the fly for a, a single pod. But keep in mind that this debug level is really, really verbose, so you probably don't want to just run with it on globally all the time. Um, while this talk is mostly focused on Mixer or on Istio 1.3, I will note that 1.4 was just released this past week, and they are starting to move telemetry away from Mixer to improve performance, but at least for now, in 1.3, you can still get the connection logs, every connection, detailed, port, source port, destination port, source service, destination service, all of this in, in the mixer telemetry logs. Um, so that's a good place to find if the connection happened, if it didn't happen, what was the Envoy error code that it returned, that, that you, could it not find, did the endpoint not map, was there some TLS issue, uh, pilot logs, since pilot, since every Envoy proxy is getting its configuration from pilot, its routing configuration, pilot knows what that configuration is and it knows whether or not it has pushed out to the proxies. Um, and then Istio CTL is their CLI. This has a growing set of commands for doing troubleshooting and getting insights into what's going on. Uh, basically, you can start with proxy status and it will show you whether, you know, whether it has each of the proxy for each of these pods has synced with pilot recently. And then you can dig down more into proxy config per pod. Uh, you can get the, these are all based on Envoy commands, so they're, you will soon become familiar with Envoy. I'm not going to go into this discussions, but Envoy has concepts of things like clusters, endpoints, routes, listener chains. Um, but Istio CTL is, is becoming much, much more useful as a one, if not one stop, but at least a really vital debugging tool. So talking about some of the common application issues. Now, if you're just, if your applications are all very vanilla HTTP based services, you probably are not gonna have issues, hopefully, hopefully. But as soon as you either are mixing uh, different kinds of HTTP, like, like you have lots of gRPC, you have lots of HTTP2, you have TLS in the mix, um, things can get a lot more complicated. This is a universal issue though. The proxy, since the proxy, Istio proxy runs as a sidecar container in each pod, well, when that, it starts up at the same time as your application container. So, and again, the IP tables routes have been rewritten so that all traffic is going through this container, which may or may not be ready to receive traffic. Uh, so, it has to pull its configuration from, from pilot, depending on whatever latency is involved, it can take you know, seconds or longer. So ideally, your, your application should retry. It shouldn't just try, you know, start up and expect the network to work and then freak out if it doesn't get the network. If it doesn't, uh, you can just wrap your, your entry point for the, the pod, the application pod, to wait for the port to become live. Um, this example shows wget. Uh, you can use curl, netcat, whatever. This is not great. These are these are commands that usually flag uh, flag container scanners, but uh, it's a workaround. Um, and I will say, I will go back. The best solutions here are usually 
ideal world, you have full control over the application source. You can modify it as needed. You're not using some third party thing that you either can't modify or take time to modify or some legacy app that no one really wants to touch if they don't want, you know, because it's probably just going to fall apart as soon as you pull out, you know, a little thread. So best solution, but the workarounds are viable. They're sometimes a little more painful. Every once in a while they will reduce security. They will be a little harder to manage, but they are getting things working now until you can either make downstream application modifications or until Istio comes in through sometimes with better support for some of these corner cases. Uh, the Kubernetes liveness readiness probes. Um, because network, you know, HTTP based readiness probes come from the kubelet on the node. If you're using MTLS enforcement in your Istio pods, in your Istio mesh, mesh pods, well, the kubelet doesn't have its own MTLS certificate, so it will fail the uh, authentication piece. So there are a couple solutions here. Um, Istio has made a lot of progress with this. Best solution, though, is, is to use a separate port on the application container for health checks than for your main application port. Uh, you can also use an exec-based check instead of a, a network-based check. Um, workarounds, these are supported in Istio as of, I think, one version 1.2, maybe. Um, it will it basically these rewrite the health check role so that it passes through the pilot agent and yeah <laughs> it will make it will make the health check pass through MTLS correctly. Uh, mixed protocol ports. Um, so Envoy proxy has the concept of listener chains and some of these are very specific L7 protocols. Like there is a difference between even though gRPC is a subset of HTTP2. There are different Envoy listener chains for both of these. Um, so every once in a while, you will have something where you're having two, what, what Envoy considers two different types of traffic go to the same port, and it doesn't like that. It will either reject the configura configuration outright, or one of the two will not work. So ideally, yeah, each of these different two Envoy protocols would use a different application container port. If you can't do that, you can do some magic with proxying. <laughs> and this sounds really gross and it is really gross, but putting a proxy either in front of or behind the, on, well, behind the Envoy proxy to handle one of the protocols so that it has a different listener port and it still ends up in the container at the right port. Um, Non-TCP protocols. Envoy right now only supports TCP-based routing. So this still leaves out UDP, SCTP, and plus all the other protocols that even Kubernetes is not very good at. Um, they will probably, I suspect they will have UDP. I've seen, I've seen noise around it. Uh, it's really important because, you know, DNS for one thing, a lot of other protocols still use UDP. So you have to keep that in mind and to control those protocols, uh, you're not gonna get any encryption, but you should use Kubernetes network policies if they're available in your cluster. So pod security policies, policies or contacts can break the Istio init container. Um, by default, like I said, Envoy, the, uh, the IP tables rules are rewritten on the node so that traffic goes to the right, is routed through the proxy in each pod. But that has to run because it needs the net admin capability. It has to run with elevated privileges. So if you're using Kubernetes pod security, pod security policies or well, if you're using Istio sidecar injection, so your, your deployment, your application's deployment spec also has reduced capabilities that can cause an issue. Um, the best workaround now, I think it's, it may still be beta, I think it's close to graduation. There is an Istio CNI, a container network interface plugin <laughs> that, that will handle the IP tables re rules for you on the node. So it, it runs as a daemon set. It does have es escalated privileges, but it can therefore handle the IP tables rules and your application pods don't need escalated privileges. Um, so, that's, so that gets rid of the need for the init container. Sometimes you'll still have services that are still using their own TLS certs in that for, for client authentication. Uh, Istio expects any TLS, unless you've configured it otherwise, to be using its mutual TLS issued by its Citadel process with its you know, certificate authority. So 
you have a couple options here. None of these are really perfect. You can use your own certificate authority in Citadel. This is okay if you only have one of these special Snowflake applications. Um, if you have more than one, obviously it's only going to make one happy. You can convert the application just to use Istio's auth. Uh, do pass through and understand that you're going to be running in a cluster in a mesh that has its own end-to-end -end encryption and authorization, authentication and authorization systems, and you'll be okay. Uh, a not great workaround because this does reduce the security of the, of, of the connections is to set the Istio MTLS mode for the, the endpoint service to permissive in that it will accept an Istio certificate, but if it doesn't get one, it can still make the connection. These, none of these options are great. Some of them are a lot of work. Um, headless services. Headless, so, headless services are services which do not have a cluster IP. And you usually see them associated with stateful sets. Um, these are usually services where each pod spec looks the same but it's still doing different things. You'll think of things like uh, Cassandra, Zookeeper, MongoDB, where you'll have, they're all, they're all equal, but not, because one of them's going to be a primary or a leader or have control over a separate amount of data, and they need to be separately addressable. Um, I think if the, the Istio team is talking about ways to make this better, and in fact, Envoy supports some of these directly. Uh, it has Mongo, and therefore Istio does, so MongoDB, uh, Zookeeper, MySQL, it, it, it understands some of the basics of these protocols, but there's still work to be done. So the workarounds for now for internal traffic would be adding, you basically have to roll your own service discovery for each of the, the pods in the stateful set. Um, you would add an Istio service entry re resource per pod. So you can, if you had a Cassandra ring, you'd have Cassandra zero, Cassandra one. Uh, if, if it's traffic that has to talk outside the mesh, where it has to address an individual pod, you can use the Istio virtual service resource and you'd still need one for pod, per pod. And Istio won't manage this for you. You'll have to come up with your own management scheme, your own, again, your own service discovery scheme to make this work. But you can still run with the Envoy sidecar and therefore get the, the TLS encryption and get the authentication that you need. So some long-term strategies uh, for success with Istio. Uh, I, think, I think it's Istio to me, the, the pattern is going to be pretty similar to adoption, in some ways, to adoption for Kubernetes, where at first everyone's really excited and then everyone realizes it's really complicated and then you start, then you start to figure out how it all fits together and how, and get processes and tools that you need to make it work within your team. Um, like I said, Istio is very complicated, but it's, it's very powerful. So the first thing I strongly recommend, if you're, you're probably, hopefully, maybe, keeping your, your application, the, the manifest for deploying your application to a Kubernetes file together with, you know, in some repository. Keep the Istio resource manifest together with those. Keep it all together, keep it version controlled. And then when you, you know, make sure that your, whatever pre-production environments you have are like your production environments and that you're, you are deploying with the same configurations. Uh, you don't want to be surprised in production. Uh, create libraries. Uh, so I, like I said, it's, if you're doing very simple, straight HTTP services, Istio is, is pretty simple. But when you have to start handling these corner cases, it gets harder. So if you have different applications, like, like this is my headless service, here is the template for what you need to make that run. Um, you know, here are services with health checks. Let's figure out, maybe we'll convert them to exec checks, however you want to do it. Uh, just keep that all together and keep that available for developers so they have at least a starting point and people don't feel like they need to roll their own very weird non-standard solution, which you're just going to have to merge in later. Um, it's going to create less stress on both sides. People have a clear, this has worked before for this deployment, for, you know, this similar service. And then you're not, how did you solve that? Because I've been on the, how did you solve that side of the problem before? Uh, leverage, you, you know, Istio get, will, can give you so much detail into what your, your distributed microservice stack is doing and what each pod is doing. Leverage that, both leverage that to prove the value of 
using Istio, assuming that you aren't really sick of it and don't just want to throw it out. <laughs> Use it both to show that and to, to drive improvements in your own internal services. Um, you know, you start showing bottlenecks. How can we improve that? Narrow that down. Data, get that data out there. Um, microservices, as they spread, even if it's even if you have a finite set and just the traffic increases, those bottlenecks will start to come up. And being able to pull that out and say, "Hey, I can already help you know track this down," is is going to be really helpful. Uh, you know, make Istio work for you because you're. By the time you get it running, you've already done a lot of work, so it should start to pay you back. And then the Istio working group is very open to questions, to suggestions, to help you know if to help with workarounds. Um, if you want to see something new, open a feature request. It's you know they're on GitHub. They have a, a Slack channel, a community Slack channel, where some of the core develop the core developer groups are. Working groups are, just go in, You're, it's free to register. You can ask questions, you can see what people are talking about, what they're working on. Get involved, they're really, they're really open to feedback and it may not happen quickly, oops. But hopefully it will happen. I could not turn off my screensaver, sorry. <laughs> so, okay. So, um, I really raced through this even faster than I thought. So. There is more. We have there are more blogs about Istio and getting started with Istio at um, stackrocks.com. I have not yet, but I am going to write a, blog, a companion blog post to talk about some of this more in depth. That should show up in the next week or two. Um, you can uh, you can either watch that or I will link. I will announce it in my LinkedIn when I get there when it gets posted. Um, just my background really quick, which I didn't really cover. I come more from an operational SRE background. So to me, this is all infrastructure. And I'm like, yeah, that's infrastructure. And then it's infrastructure, though, that has been surfaced up to you know, a higher developer level, people who are not as used to infrastructure. And I'm going, OK, no need to panic. We've done this before. So, But it, it's, it's very interesting to see, for me to see how it's translated now into a, different, a kind of different view from the world. So, okay. Any any questions? Anything? Yes. No, I, I will. I will say that I've looked at. I have not ever gotten hands-on with any of the other, the other um, service meshes. So I can't. I'm not going to say that Istio will solve your problems and that another service mesh wouldn't solve them better. Istio definitely. I mean, I think Linkerd is definitely. I know it's it's developing rapidly and it's it still doesn't have some parity with the Istio s s set. So. I would encourage you, maybe I should have been fair, on the, on the should you deploy Istio. If you do need some service mesh pieces, I totally recommend going out and seeing what else is out there and seeing if you, know, if you don't need this full Sherman tank, if you can get, get by with a small Jeep, then yes, absolutely. No, we're, we're working on supporting Istio and supporting, get, more importantly, getting Istio, securing Istio. And it is, it, since it, it's, it, it's one of the more security focused in some ways uh, meshes at this point and our interest is more security. So that's how that followed. I personally do not endorse or, you know, devalue. If use what works for you, definitely. I'm, I'm a big pragmatist that way. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. <laughs>